July 21st, day 65 of the current leg of our golden anniversary adventure. This has been an incredible journey for us and it's just a little over halfway completed. Our trek across the lower 48 from Florida was enjoyable and exciting, while the trek through Canada and Alaska has proven to be a true adventure. It'll be at least another 51 days on the road, and we are looking forward to exploring Fairbanks and even further north before heading back into Canada to further explore the Yukon Territory and the province of British Columbia, Vancouver Island, and a half dozen great spots in the lower 48 states. We have just one more day left here in Denali National Park, and we're going to enjoy every minute of it before returning to our northbound route. From Florida to Alaska, from the East Coast to the West Coast, join Jay and Steve celebrating their 50th wedding anniversary traveling across North America in the Cool Nana Coach, their 27-foot Freedom Elite Class C motorhome as they visit the many beautiful points of interest in all 50 United States on their golden anniversary adventure. been here camped in Denali National Park for just under a week. Time has been going by in what seems to be incredibly fast for us. Each day has provided us a new adventure or experience. It's been an interesting as well as exciting time for us given the fact that this is the longest dry camping stretch we have ever attempted. No electric, internet, water or sewer hookups. But with the preparations we have made, has turned out to be a pleasant and enjoyable experience. The nearly 18 hours of daily sunlight has afforded us extended hours in which to explore this vast, practically untouched wilderness. Our transit bus adventure, deep into the backcountry, hikes along the Savage and Nenana River, Riley Creek and Horseshoe Lake have each created lasting memories for us. Exploring Denali Village with its touristy shops and various activities was a treat. We even found some decent pizza at the Prospector's Gold. And as we had truly hoped, after several fruitless days searching, we finally became members of Denali's 30% Club. Each day we took a disappointing 12-mile drive west on Denali Road to a spot where visitors historically have seen Mount Denali some 90 miles away. All we saw were foothills, valleys, and heavy cloud covering the high Alaskan range. The weather in July is known to be miserable all over, with gray cloudy skies that camouflage views of Mount Denali. It has been said that only 30% of Denali visitors get to glimpse Mount Denali. Well, finally, on our next to last day here, Jane and I took one more drive down to the 12-mile marker on the Denali Road and again saw a heavy cloud cover. But the clouds were moving, pushed by a southerly wind, and I could visualize a clearing in the cloud cover north of the Mighty One. Then, as if a gift from God, Denali peeked through the cloud cover for a minute and a half, just long enough to see and admire the highest mountain in North America and catch a photograph as well as some video of it before the wind turned north and the cloud cover once again shielded Mount Denali. explained that a very harsh winter took its toll on Denali's wildlife population. Visitors have commented that viewing the wildlife Denali historically is known for, 
proved difficult due to scarcity. We did, however, manage to see beaver, eagles, migratory birds, grizzly bear, caribou, and on our very last day here, a moose. We'll be visiting the historic Denali Kennel to see their famed sled dog team. Denali National Park and Preserve is known for its iconic and often challenging weather conditions which can make traditional methods of transportation difficult. This is where the park's official dog sled team comes into play. The dog sled team at Denali National Park plays an essential role in preserving the wilderness of the park. During the winter season when snow covers the vast park area, these dogs provide the most efficient, reliable and environmental friendly mode of transport. The park maintains one of the last traditional kennels for Alaskan Huskies in the United States, supporting a population of around 30 dogs. These dogs are not only park rangers' preferred transportation for patrolling and supporting the park, but they are also representatives and ambassadors of Alaska's rich heritage. During the winter, they haul equipment, supplies, and park personnel across the frozen terrains, ensuring the operations and preservation efforts of the park continue uninterrupted. Throughout the year, the dogs also participate in educational programs for visitors, introducing them to a historical form of winter travel and the significant role that sled dogs played in the development of Alaska. In addition to this, every day in the summer, park rangers demonstrate traditional dog sledding methods and share about the importance of the dog team to the park. Denali is home to 2 million acres of federally designated wilderness and nearly all 4 million acres of the rest of the park is considered eligible wilderness. Designated wilderness is defined as an area where the earth and its community of life are untrampled by man, where man himself is a visitor who does not remain and requires that there is no use of motor vehicles or motorized equipment. Sometimes it's necessary for park management to do work in Denali's wilderness or travel through wilderness areas. Dog teams are a great alternative to motorized transport for accessing these locations. The Sled Dog Kennel helps with many park projects, including assisting with scientific research, transporting building materials, breaking in winter trails, and checking up on historic cabins, maintaining a range of presence in the park for Denali's intrepid winter visitors. These programs are extremely popular among tourists who get to learn more about the state's history and experience the strength and athleticism of the extraordinary animals firsthand. Denali sled dogs are an integral part of the park, maintaining its tradition, educating visitors, and supporting essential winter activities. These dogs symbolize an enduring partnership between canines and humans in Alaska and exemplify the dedication towards conserving this magnificent park and its rich heritage. Alabama! Alabama! 
Alabama, Alaska, Arizona, Arkansas. Yeah. Oh, come on, guys. Texas. Texas, where else? Delaware. New Jersey. New Jersey. New Jersey. New Jersey. South Dakota. South Dakota. South Dakota. Utah. Utah. Anything else? Germany? Yes, you might get the furthest award. Woohoo! Awesome. Anywhere else? Cool. Well, it sounds like we are all coming from a lot of different places which is really incredible and I love to hear it. And we are so happy to have you guys here. So if you didn't hear earlier, my name is Emily and welcome to Denali Nassar and welcome to our dog sled kennels. Today we are here for a dog demonstration, right? Is that what you're here for? Okay, cool. So we will have an opportunity to see some of our dogs do what they do best and run around our fun track. We're also gonna learn a little bit about what they do here, what their purpose is, and this incredible bond between musher and team to be able to protect wilderness at Denali National Park and Preserve. But before we do, I want to see a raise of hands. Who here has a dog at home? Okay, a lot of us. Awesome. Who here has uh, maybe plans to have a dog at home? Great. So thank you all for being here to celebrate with us. And you're going to notice our dog teams are going to come out here. And I want to mention, if you are um, over on this side, you need to be behind the red line at all times. So you guys over here, I know you're paying attention to the dog kennels. But um, if you guys don't mind scooching behind the red line. And then everyone else in the stands, go ahead and um, stay behind the post. So if you guys don't mind standing up for now and staying behind the post and stay exactly where you are uh, while the dogs are out. All right, I'm gonna let you have your attention on the dogs for now. Using dog teams minimizes the use of planes, helicopters, and snow machines, and is more aesthetically compatible with the philosophy of wilderness as defined by the Wilderness Act. Dog teams create no fumes or exhaust, and do not disrupt the natural soundscape. Though dog team travel to remote locations is often much slower and incorporates its own unique set of challenges, the continued use of dog teams as transportation is a priority for park management. The dogs not only protect wilderness, but also help carry on history and tradition. Equipment. Move equipment, yeah, move equipment and building materials, absolutely. 
So our dogs here are actually our freight dogs, um, and they help us move freight around the national park in the winter time. So you might wonder why in the world do we not use snow machines or like trucks and trailers and things like that. Well, here at Denali National Park, we have designated no wilderness, and we have a mission to continue to keep it that way. So sometimes that means using the least amount of footprint possible. And here at Denali, we use sled dogs to do, uh, freight things around, like building materials. If anyone of you have gone down the McKinley Station Trail, down the Triple Lakes Trail, and seen the suspension bridge down there, all of those materials were actually brought in by our sled dogs in the wintertime, and then um, built in the summertime by our trail crew. So that's a really great example of just some of the work that they do here in the winter. Want to see more? Check us out on Instagram on our Golden Anniversary Adventure page. dog and truly never wants to stop <laughs> as you can tell wow. now we have party party is the odd ball out of this group uh, party is not related to the rest of them but she truly is here just for the party she's a seasoned uh dog uh blood team and she is coming back here in just a second party truly is named after her own name she is always ready to party there she goes. Good job, party. Let's see, who do we have next? We have Dargo. Dargo is one of, uh, again, that same litter from Jewel. So, siblings with Merlin. Um, and named after, again, those 911 uh, search and rescue dogs. Dargo is a little bit more shy than some of the other dogs in the yard, but certainly is an incredible mushing dog. And there goes Dargo. Now, last but not have Boomer. Boomer is one of the largest dogs in this litter. Again, siblings with Dargo and Merlin, and Mama is Jules, and so they are going to go back here shortly to run home. Hi, Boomer. Boomer. Oh, wrong way. Like I said, dogs are still learning. Uh, but they're doing a pretty good job for the most part. So why don't we give a round of applause for the dogs and their kennel staff. <laughs> Great. So we almost had a full family group here, plus party. Ask me any questions that you might have, and then head back to say goodbye to our dogs. Okay? So our last quote is, Those who teach us the most about humanity aren't always humans. This is by Donald Hicks. Thank you all for being here. I hope you have a really great rest of your trip and enjoy the boat.
No, he's, he's definitely related. They're all, all five of these are from Olive, the dog that just left, and then uh, the steward at the back of the yard is the sire, the father. Every, every time there's a litter of puppies born, we pick a theme, we name every dog in the litter in relation to the same theme. Um, so this year, since this is the Kennel Centennial, these dogs are named after the original dogs that were here in the first place 100 years ago. Normally we try to have one litter, one litter a year. Um, so they, we are kind of at the mercy of the dog's heat cycles, so they have two heat cycles a year. We try to time it so that the puppies are uh, in, the, in the summertime. And so that's ideally in a perfect world, that's how it works out. <laughs> Uh, Munchkin, one of the dogs over behind you there, his litter, they were born in October, so we take care of puppies when it's negative 40. This wraps up our five-episode video of our visit to Denali National Park and Preserve. Thank you all so much for watching. If you enjoyed this journey with us, please hit that like button and subscribe to our channel for more incredible adventures throughout the United States and Canada. We hope you will join us next week as we move our base camp to Fairbanks and journey to the historic village of Nanana embark on the historic riverboat discovery tour on the Chena River, stop off at the Alieska Pipeline Visitor Location, explore the incredible Fountainhead Antique Automobile Museum, and finally our epic journey to the Arctic Circle as we continue Jane and Steve's Golden Anniversary Adventure.